le programme. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to St. George's Park for this squad announcement with Gareth Southgate ahead of the Euro 2024 qualifier against Ukraine and the 150th anniversary heritage match against Scotland. We'll start as ever with Rob Dorsey from Sky Sports News when you're ready, Rob. Thanks, Andrew. Hi, Gareth. Nice to see you. Um, Eddie and Ketty and, and Levi Colwell, I think, are going to grab the headlines as the most startling picks that you've made. Talk us through those two first, please. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, two young players who are doing very well have done well with our junior teams. Um, Levi, of course, had some time with us in the summer anyway. Um, and really the basis of this squad is, you know, we left Old Trafford after two really good performances, um, four good performances in the group. So I didn't really want to move from the squad we had that day. We're only three games into the start of the season. Um, but we've had... A lot of people at the back with with issues, so we've had to make changes there. And the only other change then is Eddie, who's coming in because it's an area where we'd like to have a look at him. He's a young player with a really good pedigree, um, very good finisher, and um, it's good for him to have some time with us. You know, he's I think record goal scorer with the under twenty ones as well, so he's not had the chance to work with us up to this point. But he, he's um, he's a player that we're really interested in. Raheem Sterling's been flying for Chelsea. Why, why is he not there? Well, because of what I said. You know, we we were really pleased with the group to bring Raheem back in. We've got to leave somebody else out. And um, on the back of three games, I didn't think anybody in this group of attacking players warrants being left out. Um, so it's really good to see Raheem start the season so well. He looks in good condition. He looks hungry. He's obviously an important player for us. Um, and has been an important player for us. But we have, in those attacking areas just behind the nine, got a lot of competition for places. And um, I think all of those players have started the season well, and they've certainly, the group that are with us, have done really well for us in the in the recent games. We shouldn't have any concerns about his long-term England future here, the fact that this is the third squad on the trot, I think, that he's not been involved in. Yeah, but he was not available for the last two, so... Um, and of course, that's given other people the opportunity to to play well and um, and to establish themselves in the group. So, it's a difficult call, and you know, Raheem's not particularly happy about it. But um, I understand that because he's an important player for us, and um, you know, I'm, I'm convinced he's going to have an excellent season with Chelsea. There's no doubt about that. Thank you. Um, there's always controversy whenever you pick the players because I, I think you and a lot of fans would probably like to have 30 or 40 in this squad, but. Harry Maguire and Jordan Henderson's inclusions will probably be, make make some headlines as well and, and make one or two fans, you know, prick their ears up and think why. Harry Maguire hasn't played any time at all for Manchester United. Jordan Henderson now in Saudi Arabia. Mm-hmm. What's your thinking with those two senior players? Well, with Harry Maguire, we've lost a lot of experienced players in terms of caps at centre-half. So we're giving some less experienced players the opportunity to come into the squad. Um... But unfortunately, you know, we, we look like Tyrone is out for most of the season. John Stones is out for this camp. Uh, Eric Dyer hasn't appeared in Tottenham's squad. So if I'm looking at all the players we've given caps to in the last few years, Connor Cody is also out and, and playing in the championship now. So there is a space there. And I think for these two games, it's important we have some experience in that area of the pitch. Um, Clearly, with Harry and with Calvin Phillips, it's far from ideal that they're not playing football. But similarly with Calvin, I think Declan Rice was the only English player to start at the weekend as a single pivot. And um, Calvin is the next best position to do that. Um, Hendo can play there, Conor Gallagher could play there, but it's not their best position. We've got players playing in the league that are playing in a double pivot, Someone like Angel Gomez is doing that, but it's a different sort of role. So, yeah, it's not it's not a good situation that those guys aren't playing football. Um, But that's you know, in certain positions we have a lot of depth, and in other positions we we don't have a lot of depth. Moving away from this squad, Gareth, and I I know this is a squad announcement news conference, but 
so much has happened since we've last spoken to you. And, and somebody you gave a debut to is, is Mason Greenwood. You gave him an England debut. He's now, by mutual consent, left Manchester United looking for another club. Um, if and when he gets that other club, does he still have an England future with you in charge? Well, it's clearly a very complex case. And at the moment, he isn't playing football. So it, it's not a consideration for us. Going forward? Or is that hypothetical and you don't want to go well, there? Well, that is hypothetical. And I think it's a topic that whatever I say, you know, I could give you a very nuanced answer in either way, but it, that would just be used in a less nuanced fashion, frankly. Fair enough. Um, look, massively important story in football right now is, is Luis Rubiales and what's happened in, in the Spanish Federation. You probably saw what everybody else saw. Um, what did you make of it? And does it show that misogyny in football, if you like, is, 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 is there for everybody to see and it's not just a Spanish problem as well? Um, I would say that when you're a male in a leadership position, you've got a huge responsibility uh, in terms of how you behave and, uh, well, any leader, but in this instance, a male interacting with females. So, you know, that, that is my first thought. Um, and my second thought would be with the Spanish team because they played unbelievably well um, deserve huge amount of credit, as do our girls, who, who had a brilliant tournament. Um, and it's very sad for them that the focus is not on what they did on the pitch. Last one from me. I'm sorry I've taken a lot of time, but you'll have no doubt enjoyed watching the Lionesses go as far as, as they did. Came very close again. Um, but I wanted to ask about your, your, your opposite number, Serena Wiegmann, who's done an incredible job. And she's now being linked with managerial roles in the men's game. Mm -hmm. um, could she make that step and be successful in the men's game, do you believe? Um, well, firstly, she's done a brilliant job with, with our team. And, um, you know, huge respect. We, we were, you know, communicating through the tournament and... Uh, we, we got on really well, so um, I'm really happy for her, what she's done. I think she's up for an award tonight and I hope, hope she manages to secure that. So um, I, don't, I don't know is the answer to your question because clearly we have women CEOs in some of the busy, bu biggest businesses in the world. So um, females in those leadership positions, it's more than possible. Um, of course, nobody is uh, being given that opportunity yet in, in men's football. And I guess you've got to ask them as well whether that's something they actually want to do because there's a debate, um, a general debate, but then there's actually what do individual people want to do. I know Emma has often said, mm, not, not necessarily for, for me. So, um, and as I'm sitting here answering your questions, that probably tells you why. Um, but um, yeah, so yeah, it's an, it's an interesting debate, but I, I don't know the answer. <laughs> Hi, Gareth. Uh, Jordan Henderson's made his move to Saudi Arabia, and you said you were going to have a, a chat with him, and he was going to speak to you about his England future. Is there a concern about the level of football he'll be playing, and how will he be assessed going forward? Well, we've watched every game. Um, the key as we move forward is going to be the physical uh, intensity of the league, and because of the heat as well, whether. Um, whether that's going to allow him to perform at the level we need, that's, that's a huge consideration. Um, clearly, the level of the league, we're still assessing and is changing all the time because um, lots of other countries are going to have this issue. You know, Portugal have got a few players there. Um, other, other European countries have got players there. So I'm sure they're going to be playing international football still. Um, Hendo's got to, and we've got to assess where he's going to sit in terms of our squad and map him against those other players. And um, that's not as easy when you're not playing in the uh, Champions League games or the Premier League games. But as I've already discussed with a couple of other players that are in the squad, it's not a, a, a straightforward decision on picking any of the positions, really. When you name an England squad, there's usually an, a lot made of the number of fullbacks uh, in the team. There's only three recognised in this squad. Trent is listed as a midfielder. Is that an area of concern now going forward? Is it just a situation you find yourself in for this camp? Well, there aren't many English left backs playing in the high, at the highest level. Um, I think you're talking Tyreek Mitchell, Rico Henry, obviously Ben and. Uh, and Dan Byrne is a centre-back playing at left-back with Newcastle. 
um, Luke missing. So, um, you know, Levi Colwell covers both those positions. It's been interesting to see him play there. Um, so there, there may be one or two others we look at in that area as the as the season goes on. But for what are two really important games for us, this was the squad we felt was the right one. And just lastly, on Levi Colwell, how important is it to have a specialised left-sided, left-back, left, left-footed? left Everyone said how rare it is to find a player at the elite level uh, in football. Well, he's doing really well. He's progressing. Um, we really liked him at you know at the end of last season with Brighton that's why we brought him in to train with us and um, he had a really good tournament with the under 21s um, so he um, showed under pressure that, that he could cope uh, with those things has started well with Chelsea in a slightly different position not you know it's not ideal for him in that it's something he hasn't done for a while but he's but he has done it in the past um, so you know it's very early stages in his career, but he's really uh, made good progress. Thanks, Alex. Uh, please raise your hand if you do have any further questions. But for now, Alex, you pass it back to Rob Tannen, The Athletic. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, Gareth, um, just on Jordan Henderson, uh, with England choosing to not wear the One Love armband at the World Cup and now one of the senior squad members playing in Saudi Arabia, uh, does football in general, including the England team, need to accept that LGBT fans are not their priority when it comes to the moments that really matter? Um, well, uh, look, I think we are supportive of the LGBT plus community. Um, a, a, you know, a large number of the team and staff have either relatives or friends from that community. So, you know, it's something that we, a relationship that we're very conscious of and a situation that we're very conscious of. Um, we have tried to be supportive um, but I also accept that members of that community felt let down around the World Cup. Um, and, yes, yeah, I think you have to live your life as you see fit. So, you know, I can only talk on a personal level and um, my feelings of what the team represent, that I'll always try to do the th things, live my life in a way that I believe is inclusive and um, try to be accepting of all cultures and understanding of everybody's different positions um, and I do know that we're in a position where there might be a feeling we haven't done enough in certain situations and if that's the case then you know we, we have to accept that criticism um, but it's not intentional that we would uh, feel that we'd let down any of our fans um, but it's very co these are all very complex situations that we're trying to do our, the best at uh, navigating. Any further questions in this section? Okay. James Arling at the ESPN. <coughs> Thank you. Hi, Gareth. Just following on for that, um, have you got any concerns about the potential fan reaction towards Jordan if he does play in these two games? Because of what? Well, because of the, the controversy around his move to Saudi Arabia and the fact that obviously he's not played in England since he's moved. Um, no, I mean, I, I don't really know. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know. We're, we're picking a team for football reasons. Um, there are lots of different ownership models of clubs in England. There are lots of different players playing in countries where uh, there are different religious beliefs. Um, yeah, uh, I, I don't really know why a player would receive an adverse reaction because of where he plays his football. Um, that, that of course, is a personal choice, but um, I, I think it's really difficult to... Yeah, I'm a bit lost, really, with some of the questioning because um, you, you, you walk in to try and talk about a squad announcement based on football decisions and increasingly we're na navigating such complex political aspects that yeah I, I'm not really trained to do so 
Um, forgive me if I'm stumbling a little bit, but I, I find it really uh, a, a really difficult scenario to try and get right. Um, we'll do the best we can, um, and we are trying to make the decisions on any number of reasons, but I have to pick a squad based on the players that we think can get us qualified for a European Championship, um, and that's that's why we've picked the squad we have. Let me ask you a more positive one then about Harry Kane. He's obviously moved to Bayern. I just wondered if did he seek your advice at all? Did you speak to him before he made that move? And what does it say about you know what messages it sends to the younger players that an England captain, thirty prime of his career, is prepared to go and play abroad? Yeah, I think it's a, a really good challenge for him. Um, Bayern Munich's a huge football club. He's leaving a, a, a big football club here. Uh, to go to the biggest one in Germany. Um, he's going to be expected to be challenging for trophies every game he plays. He's got a new set of supporters to win over and a new set of teammates to impress every day on the training field. So I think from that respect, a fresh challenge for him, um, I would view as a positive. Um, I think from a life experience perspective, to live in different cultures to live in different countries is brilliant for your own personal development and your family. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking to him a little bit more. I've, I've briefly spoken with him, but um, it'd be good to, to see how he's finding everything uh, when he's with us next week. Did he seek your advice at all before he made the move or not? No, no. I mean, I'm always there if players want to speak, but um, I'm also not influencing their club decisions. That wouldn't be right, really. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, James. Any further questions? Okay, we'll end it there. Thanks for your time today. Thank you.